this week in Jamaica now. Question, Mr. President, if I may, if I may ask Peter, one other question, are you worried? That's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I... Donald Trump at it again. How he roughed up a White House supporter asking him immigration questions. And his Republican Party has lost control of the U.S. House of Representatives in the midterm elections. Petrojam on the defensive after the opposition raises questions about a partner that's filing for bankruptcy. Convicted Jamaican hijacker Stephen Frey getting mental health support following his release from prison. Female Clarendon taxi operator murdered. And over in Westmoreland, four relatives suffer a similar fate. And keep corporal punishment. A high schooler sends a message to the government. I'm Althea McKenzie in for Damon Mitchell and this is Jamaica Now. United States President Donald Trump was at it again this week, attempting to publicly embarrass a CNN reporter, asking him immigration questions. At a White House press briefing, one of Trump's handlers sought to take the microphone from the reporter after the president told the journalist he had had enough. Question, Mr. President, if I may, if I may ask Peter, one other question, are you worried? That's enough. That's Mr. enough. Mr. President, I, well, that's I was enough. Ask one of the, the other folks. That's had, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. I'm, I'm, Mr. Excuse President, me. that's enough. Mr. President, I had one other Peter, question, if go. I may ask, on, on the Russia investigation. Are you concerned that, that you may have I'm not concerned about anything with you the may Russian have investigation because it's a hoax. Are you, that's enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about indictments coming down in this investigation? Mr. President. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. I, I think that's unfair. You're a very rude person. The way you treat Sarah Huckabee is horrible. And the way you treat other people are horrible. You shouldn't treat people that way. Go ahead. In, in, go in ahead, Jim, Peter, go in, ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts his Well, I'm not like a big fan of, of yours either, so, I understand. Know, to be honest. So let, me, so let me ask you a question, if I can. You repeatedly you said... Are, you are the best. Mr. President, you repeatedly, over the course okay, of... Okay, just sit down, please. Well, when you, when you report fake news, no. When you report fake news, which CNN does a lot, you are the enemy of the people. International media watchdog group Reporters Without Borders has condemned Trump's behavior. And Trump's Republican Party has lost control of the United States House of Representatives following Tuesday's midterm elections. However, the Republicans will retain the majority in the Senate. Before the election, Trump had said it would be a sort of referendum on his stewardship. The outcome means the House will now be better able to pressure Trump to account for his policies and actions. However, Trump is warning that he can play that game too by launching an investigation into the leaking of classified information. The state-owned oil refinery Petrojam has issued a statement refuting assertions from the opposition that it has failed to collect U.S. $3 million from a Greek fuel trading company that has filed for bankruptcy protection in the United States. Petrojam General Manager Winston Watson says all amounts for supplies delivered before November 4, 2018 to the Greek firm Aegean have been fully settled. He says the last delivery to Aegean was loaded on Sunday, November 4, 2018 and was worth U.S. $370,000. Watson says representatives from the refinery were in dialogue with Aegean and expects the money to be paid. However, the Petrojam boss did not give a payment date. Stephen Frey, the Jamaican man who was sentenced to 83 years in prison for hijacking a commercial airline at the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James, nine years ago, is back with his family after being released on parole. His sister Dominic says Frey is in good hands and asserts that he is getting support for his mental health issue. Jamaica was thrust into the international spotlight on April 19, 2009, when Frey, armed with a gun, forced his way onto an aircraft operated by Kanjet Airlines after it arrived at the Sangster International Airport shortly after 10 p.m. He was subsequently indicted in the Western Regional Gun Court for illegal possession of firearm and ammunition, shooting with intent, robbery with aggravation, and assault. Although sentenced to a total of 83 years on the different counts, the sentences were to run concurrently, and so Frey was only required to serve 20 years. A 45-year-old female taxi driver was shot and killed Wednesday afternoon along the Tollgate Main Road in Clarendon. The driver, Claudia Nadine Thompson, who hailed from Ebony Park in the parish and who plied the race course to Ebony Park route, was shot by unknown assailants close to 1 p.m. 
Her death has left relatives and friends in shock as they try to come to grips with her killing. And in Westmoreland, the Little London Police have identified the four persons who were killed by gunmen Thursday morning in Maysbure Meadows. The deceased have been identified as 31-year-old mechanic Howard Humes, 23-year-old Siobhan Humes, 33-year-old farmer Paulton Humes, otherwise called Dwight, and 25-year-old Kenesha Wilson, all of Maysmuir Meadows in the parish. The Gleaner understands the victims are all from the same family. Reports say that about 1 a.m. the bodies of the four persons were found in their homes by a police team which responded to reports of gunfire in the community. 18-year-old Deandra Edwards is making a passionate plea for the government to think carefully about the repercussions of completely prohibiting corporal punishment, pointing out that it will only lead to further indiscipline and chaos in Jamaica. The Cedar Grove Academy student who used the Bible as the premise for her reasoning pointed to other jurisdictions where the practice is not allowed, which she says has caused a lack of respect among young people. The Chedi Jagan International Airport, CJIA, in Georgetown, Guyana, reopened Friday morning a few hours after a Fly Jamaica airliner made an emergency landing 45 minutes into its flight to Toronto, Canada. Public Infrastructure Minister David Patterson confirmed that six people were injured during the incident and were being treated at the Diamond Regional Hospital. The Boeing 757 aircraft with 118 adults and two infants on board was forced to return to the CJIA minutes after its departure for Canada because of technical difficulties and overran the airstrip on the emergency landing. The plane with its eight crew members of six Guyanese and two Jamaicans also had on board one American, 82 Canadians, 35 Guyanese, one Pakistani and a Trinidadian. Patterson said the flight departed Guyana at 2.10 a.m. local time and at 2.21 a.m. the pilot indicated there was some hydraulic problem and requested permission to return, and he did. On landing, the emergency services were activated, and since then an investigator from the Guyana Civil Aviation Authority has taken responsibility for the crash site. Patterson said the United States' National Transportation Safety Board has been informed. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at onlinefeedback at gleanerjm.com. You may tune into Power 106 FM for regular updates. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. I'm Althea McKenzie, and before we go, highlights from the 2018 staging of the RGR Gleaner Restaurant Week launch on Sunday. We're going to tell you welcome to Restaurant Week. It's happening right here on the lawns of Devon House, I tell you. We start on Friday, and I guess the best indication so far is that we have 100 restaurants mm -hmm. um, who have signed on this year. I pre the food from early so that I'm going to spend my money working. I'm a foodie by nature, so anywhere the food is, Kingston Kitchen, Restaurant Week, I'll be there. I look forward to Restaurant Week every single year because I am a bona fide foodie. So if you're going to ask me if I'm going to go to Restaurant Week this year, the answer is absolutely yes. <laughs>